guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella. I just dropped my bag. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> um, this is another episode of Crochet and Chat. I think it's number six. Um, I'm not really going to be... Well, I guess I'm kind of crocheting. I'm more like sewing together. I'm working on my giant octopus. I'm done with all the crochet parts. I just have to s crochet, single crochet it all together. So I guess I am crocheting. Just, yeah, whatever. I'm crocheting. It counts. So I'm going to go ahead and... Well, first, I'm going to say that my washer and dryer are both going, so if you hear that in the background, that's why. I am not a full-time crafter. I am also a housewife, so I have to do housewifey type things, which includes laundry, especially when our bedding is dirty and needs to be washed. So this is my baggie. I still got some in there. I got some more I got to add. I just procrastinated. All right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this one I can't actually do right now. I'm going to put this one aside because I'm going to make a whole video about that. Do another one. <laughs> Oops, I got two. Okay, this one is from Cindy Kinney. Hi, Cindy. Cindy has been with me forever. I'm pretty sure she was one of my very first subscribers from when I first started making my videos. Um, I know her pretty well. So it's pretty cool to get a uh, question by her. And her question was, do we plan on having any more kids? So let me get my octopus ready. <laughs> Leave me down below if you have any questions, or um, also let me know what you're working on while you're watching this. I'd like to know what everybody's working on. So I'm working on sewing tentacles together. But do we plan on having more kids? That's kind of a, it's like a hard question to answer because ideally in a perfect world, I would love to have another kid. And we're talking about it. We've actually, we're talking about it recently, like yesterday. Because <laughs> uh, we would both like to have another kid, boy or girl. I'd love to have a little girl, but I would also love to have another little boy. But, it's, you know, having a kid isn't the easiest thing, at least for me. I'm sure some people are better at it. And Jesse almost killed me, literally. I got preeclampsia really bad with him. We both got close to dying. <laughs> um, and mentally, it's hard. You know, I, would, I think it would be hard to have another kid. I don't know. I mean, a lot of people I know have more than one little kid, and my mom had three toddlers at once, so I know it's doable, just to be hard. <laughs> and financially, it'd be a big thing, because, you know, we didn't really realize how much we would have to spend on Jesse before we had him, because, you know, I was planning on having a natural birth in a birthing center, and breastfeeding, and cloth diapering. I was planning on doing all that stuff that makes life cheaper. Not necessarily not necessarily easier, but at least cheaper. And we got sick, so we couldn't have an, a natural uh what's it called? Birthing center birth, which would have been cheaper. Uh and I wasn't able to breastfeed as much as Jesse needed it. He needed He's a big boy. <laughs> He's always been a big boy. He was nine pounds, one ounce when he was born. And uh, they thought he was going to actually be bigger. And he would have got bigger if, if I hadn't got sick. And would have carried him further. We did make it to 39 weeks. So it's not like he was a preemie or nothing like that. It's just um, he was not planning on moving. <laughs> I was not in labor at all. Like there were no signs of labor at 30 I was 39 weeks six days when they induced me so he wanted to stay in there for a lot longer they were gonna let me go to 42 weeks or 41 and a half I think and then induced me but then I ended up getting sick real bad anyways that was not what the question was <laughs> yeah I would like to have another kid we've been talking about it a lot lately but, you know, if I have another kid, that's going to put off me going back to work even longer than I already have been off of work. Because um, I'm planning on going back to work uh, next year, early next year sometime. Maybe. We shall see. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's going to happen between now and then. Anything can happen between now and then. But I don't know. I'm afraid that if we... I know if we have a kid, I'll never regret having that kid. You know, I'll love it and everything. But I know that if I don't have another baby and I want one, which is what I do, 
I will I will regret that. I will get older to the point where I can't have any more babies and I will regret missing that chance. So I don't know. We're really we're discussing it, me and Devin. When I say we were I mean me and Devin. And I don't know, I guess we'll see. I wanted to have two kids two years apart. So I'm already behind. Jesse will be two on May first. His birthday's in a couple weeks. His party's um on the 29th of April. We're having it early. So his birthday's in two weeks and his, his or his birthday party's in two weeks from Sunday and his birthday is two weeks from Tuesday, I think. Two two weeks from today? Something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't have a calendar nearby. But yeah, Cindy, we would like to have another baby. It's just we have to work out the finances and I know we'd be okay with me not working because we've been okay two and a half years that I've not worked. But, um, you know, if I go back to work, it, it would help a lot of us getting closer to work towards having a house. But we've been looking into getting a house recently, and it's pretty much impossible to get a house where we live unless you have a pretty good amount of money down. So... That's one reason we were, I was wanting to go back to work is so that we could save more towards a uh, down payment on a house. I don't have on my big ball. This looks really white. It's a blown out, but it's like a, I think it's called cupcake. I done threw away the ball band, but it's like a really off white. But it looks good with the gray and maroon color for the octopus. So yeah, I do want to have another kid. I just don't know if we're going to. If we do, it'll probably be pretty soon. We're still talking about it. Devin wants another kid too. It's not just me. He, we were talking about it a couple of days ago. I think it was yesterday, the day before that. And he was even talking about how he had baby fever again. I'm a little worried though because I feel like we waited too long. And Jesse's already horribly spoiled. And uh, I don't know how he would do with me having a little baby that I had to carry around and stuff. But if I got pregnant right now, he'd be almost three by the time I had it. So I don't know. Maybe he'd be better than I think. <laughs> Cause he's so smart and I, I know he would learn that it's his little baby brother or sister, you know. Marsha's spinning out, I don't know how loud that is. But yeah, we do want another baby. I just don't know if we're going to have one income soon. We did talk about, because we, we knew we always wanted a couple of kids. Did I put that one back up or did I drop it? I think I dropped it. So we also talked about maybe when Jesse goes to kindergarten, but that's an awful big age gap. So I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the idea is out there. It's just, I don't know when it's going to happen. Okay. I'm not going to do that one right now either. <laughs> All right, this is another one from um, Grace from GB Maltese. And it was what was I like as a teenager and a child. Whoops. I kind of feel like we did that one before. Or at least I've talked about it before on one of my videos. What was I like as a child? <laughs> well, I guess I was a normal little girl. I, I was real tomboyish. I still am pretty tomboyish. I don't wear makeup now, and I've never really worn makeup. For a while I wore eyeliner and my sister would every now and then put makeup on me, but I never actually like wore it. Never been interested in makeup. I always hated the way it felt because I can like feel it and I don't see how women walk around all day feeling that on their face. <laughs> to me it feels gross and heavy and I just want to wash it off when I wear it. I haven't worn makeup right now in years. I don't even know the last time I put makeup on. I'd like to go one day though and get like professional makeup done. The whole thing just to see what I'd look like. Cause a lot of people look totally different when they're wearing makeup. I think it'd be kind of neat to uh, just see what I would look like, you know, with all that highlighted and contoured stuff. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Like you could bring a bunch of makeup to me and lay it out and I would only know what a few things was. I know what eyeshadow and lipstick and eyeliner is. I could, I could pick some of the stuff out, but not a lot. Uh, I always, you know, I was just tomboy. I always loved playing with my brothers and 
fishing and being outside and stuff. My sister is a girly girl. She, she was always inside doing girly things, and I was always outside, you know, digging up worms and stuff. So I, I was pretty much just a little southern... You know, the, you know the movie To Kill a Mockingbird? And the book. <laughs> I always seen myself a scout. I was always very scout-like. And then I have a brother named Jimmy, so he was Jim. Even though in the movie I think his name is spelled Jim, like, like the stone. But, uh, I love that movie. It's got Robert Duvall in it. Robert Duvall is one of my favorite actors ever. <laughs> I love Robert Duvall. This thing's gonna kill me. This thing is so big. The whole pattern was super easy, but sewing it together is a pain in the butt. It looks cool though. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm never gonna get it sewed together. I tried last night three different ways and I kept ripping it out and I was like, I'm never gonna get this thing put together. But I am trying. I bought a big box of fiber fill today for him. I bought the 10 pound box. I hope that's enough. <laughs> Better be enough. Um, as a teenager, I went through an emo phase, just like it seems like everybody does. That's when I wore eyeliner. <laughs> I just, you know, I got emo gothic kind of ish, but not hardcore. That's pretty much it. I would show some pictures, but I don't think I have them on my computer. All of my old pictures like that are on, are on discs and my special box. I don't have them actually on my new laptop. So I can't I don't think I got any to show. I know I got a kindergarten picture I think or first grade picture. Because Kat wanted to see what I looked like in kindergarten. And I actually looked a lot like her. She reminds me a lot of me actually. I think that's why I like her so much. <laughs> She's my buddy. Oh my gosh, she's gonna take forever hope you guys are working on an easier project. I love this pattern though and I'd like to make another giant uh, something. But maybe not octopus or anything else with tentacles. Let's see here. I got two and a half tentacles sewed together. This one and a half I did last night and this one I just finished. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, I'm just, you know, after my emo stage in teenagehood, I just got normal, I guess, you know. <laughs> I don't know what normal is, but what everybody sees as normal. And I've been pretty much that way ever since. Today I'm wearing like a pink shirt. It's like a coral color. It's got thingies hanging on it. I really like this top. I'm trying to start wearing more girlier. Or not necessarily girlier, but like more feminine clothes. I want to start buying more and looking a little bit girly since I don't do my hair or makeup or nothing. Um... And I realized, especially watching my videos, that I'm always wearing black or gray t-shirts and jeans. You can't see my jeans, but I'm always wearing jeans. So I wanted to start wearing like more feminine type things. I don't know. It might be just a phase. I'll probably be back in my uh, black and gray shirts soon. Uh, this is the last ones in my bag. I got some more that I have to write down and put in there. And this is from my Pug of Falaf. And it was asking how Devin and I met. <laughs> Devin and I meeting is a really funny story. Well, not us meeting, but us getting together is a funny story. Us meeting, I had a friend. I won't say her name or nothing. Um, and, you know, we, we were like best friends. We hung out all the time. We were together. We practically lived with each other. We were together so much. And we were always going places together. And she... She lived in one apartment complex, and uh, one night we were out running around, you know, being young. <laughs> and uh, she wanted to go over to this other apartment complex where a bunch of people she knew lived. Because, like, a lot of young, you know, uh, young, young, like, our age people lived there. So we were going to go over there and hang out with them and just chill. And we went over there, and, you know, it's a bunch of boys <laughs> and stuff, because we were young girls running around. And, um... Devin, he smokes. I'm trying to get him to quit, but he smokes. He was out on, he lived there. Him and his family, his dad and sister lived there. He just happened to be outside smoking on the balcony. 
and my friend knew him. She had actually dated him years before that when they were in high school. Uh, I'm trying to concentrate on this stinking octopus. <laughs> it's really hard because it's two layers of blanket, so it's really thick. Ooh. And so she knew him, so she went up to him and was talking to him. And we were in my car, so I followed her because, you know, it was her ride. And, um, he was just out there smoking, you know, being all cool. Because Devin, when I met him, he was like this cool slacker type. He had long hair and, I don't know, he was just like a skater boy. He skateboard and stuff. Like a, what are they called? I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> just like a skater boy, um mellow type person <laughs> he reminded me a lot of shaggy i actually called him shaggy for a while because he was real tall and real skinny when i met him he's super duper skinny like skinny when i met him and uh, i fattened him up since <laughs> but um, he was just out there smoking and she was talking to him and i as soon as i seen him i was like oh, he's cute <laughs> and uh for me it was like instant attraction and I, when we first started hanging out i pretty much fell in love with him and knew that he was my person right away. I don't know if it was the same way for him. He says it is, but you know, I don't know. But I pretty much knew from the moment I met him that I wanted him in my life. <laughs> One way or another. So we hung out that night with him and a bunch of other people. He was out skateboarding and stuff. And uh, I remember exactly what clothes and everything he was wearing that night. It's funny. It's just it was just fate, I think. <laughs> so we hung out that night, and um, I didn't really think anything. You know, I thought he was cute and all that, but I didn't really think anything about it because, you know, he was my best friend's ex, even though it was like a high school ex. So I don't know how serious that could be. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, I went on with my life, and then a few days, I think the next weekend later, we went over there again, and he was out there again. So we all hung out again. And, uh, that's when I really, because I couldn't remember his name. I had never heard the name Devin before, so I kept forgetting what his name was. My friend had her phone, and she wanted him to update his number in her phone. So, he did. And so, I took that <laughs> as a sign of, okay, now I can get his phone number. <laughs> because um, my friend was already with another person, so I didn't think it would be too big of a deal if I started talking to her ex. And so, <laughs> this is funny to say it. It's embarrassing to talk about to people who aren't like my family and friends, in real life friends. <laughs> um, I, we, we went home, we went to her house that night and when she fell asleep, I got her phone and got his number out of her phone. <laughs> I stole his number out of her phone and I started messaging him that night. And we pretty much started talking through messenger or you know texts constantly we hit it off right away talking and then after a few days of just talking on the phone and getting to know each other he invited me to come over to his house and hang out so I did and that was the beginning of it all <laughs> I pretty much from that moment on he and I were pretty much together every moment that we weren't having to do something else I was still doing uh, college, some of my, my college stuff at the time, and he was working second shift at a factory. But we were, like every night, he, he got off then at like 11 at night, I would be at his house waiting for him to let me in, and we would just hang out all night and talk, because we were both on late shifts, we were used to staying up all night. And I remember we would stay up for hours, you know, like six or seven hours just talking, and getting to know each other, and it was just awesome. I pretty much just lived there <laughs> in a sense but yeah we started dating we met in September and we officially started dating Halloween night but it was like one in the morning so we counted as November 1st and uh, yeah that was a fun night too because Halloween night uh, we went he got snake bite piercings and I got my belly button pierced I don't have it pierced anymore it got annoying. I kept getting it stuck on everything and it's very annoying. And I used to have, I don't know if you can see it right here. I had my Monroe pierced, which is, you know, beauty spot piercing right there. I kind of missed that, but I got rid of it when I got pregnant because I was afraid the baby would rip it out. 
but um, he got his snake bites and I got my belly button and then we went to a neighbor in town that were having they were having like a haunted forest hayride thing and we got on it and it was a lot of fun and but when we were going back from the hayride I mean we were still on the hayride but when we were going back from the haunted forest to where our cars were the dude driving the the tractor didn't turn wide enough so the back end of the hayride which is where we were went down into a ditch and got stuck luckily no one got hurt no one got thrown off just got jostled around so we all had to get off of the wagon and hoof it back to where the cars were and it wasn't too far it was like half a mile so it wasn't too bad but it was fun and my friend at the time she didn't care that I was dating her ex because it's not like they were serious exes. It was just like, you know, a guy she dated in high school for a little while. Since then, though, me and that friend has had a falling out. And it's nothing nothing bad. It's just, you know, we both went our separate ways. We both, our lives started going in different directions, so. But uh, we still, we're still friends on social media. And we still, uh, you know, we talk when we see each other and all that. But. You know, she's got her own life and I've got my own life, so that's just how it is sometimes with friends, you know. But me and Dad are still together. <laughs> Once we started dating, I was over his house all the time. And his dad didn't mind at all. I cleaned for them and everything. I did laundry and all that. Because it was a man with two kids, so it was pretty messy. <laughs> um... Yeah, I pretty much just ended up moving in to his house. We dated for probably five or six months, and then I just ended up living there. And it was just like a gradual thing. It just, I was bringing some of my stuff over, and before I knew it, I lived there. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if I believe in like love and first sight and all that stuff, but definitely something with me and Devin. I, I knew from the moment I first met him when he was standing out on that porch smoking a cigarette. He was wearing a big old ugly green Carhartt jacket. And he had his hat on and he was standing there with an iPhone <laughs> doing something. Probably looking at Facebook. I don't know. I knew from then on that I, I needed to know him. <laughs> I was like, I, I need that person in my, my life. <laughs> We've been together ever since. We've only spent a few days apart from each other in that time. Let's see here. The only days we ever spent away from each other after I moved in was... I'm pretty sure it was when Jesse was born. He got to stay with me in the hospital for two days because of his work. But um, because we're not legally married. I don't know if I've ever said that to y'all. We're not actually married. I call him my husband, but we're not actually married. We're basically married. We're everything but a piece of paper. Um, he couldn't stay the whole time because he could only, he could only stay with FMLA for two days because of Jesse. But because of me, it didn't count. Like, he couldn't use me as a reason to get more FMLA. Which is kind of weird. But, uh, I had, we went into the hospital because I was getting really sick and swelling and my blood pressure was crazy on a Friday evening. I called them Thursday and was telling them, no, I had an appointment Thursday and they said everything was fine. Which was not true. Because <laughs> I'd been feeling, I'd been monitoring myself for weeks and knew that something was wrong. They never listen to a first time mom. They always think we're just paranoid. <laughs> but um, I had I had been monitoring, moder monitoring. I can't even say that word. My blood pressure at home. My mom had a blood pressure thingy, and I was using it. I borrowed it from her and was using it. And um, I knew something was wrong. And Jesse's movements had decreased significantly. Like he wasn't moving at all in there, no matter what I did. And uh, so I called them on a Friday morning, and they told me that if it, you know, if it's, they told me to come into labor and delivery at like six that night, and they would monitor monitor me for a few hours, and then if it was, you know, if they needed to, they'd admit me. And they told me to go ahead and, you know, like 
bring my bags just in case because I was already um, you know I was 39 weeks pregnant so they knew that you know if something was wrong they could have just um, induced me or whatever and got it over with so we went into the hospital that night we got everything ready you know we took care of everything we needed to take care of and we went and ate and then <laughs> went to the hospital and they decided to do a 24 hour urine on me because I had been doing you know the pee tests like they do at every OBGYN I guess every um every time I went they made me pee in a cup and they tested it supposedly for protein but apparently they didn't do it very well because that night you know I'd been feeling bad for weeks and monitoring my own blood pressure and it was constantly way too high and um, my whole body was swelling up and everything uh, but I was having really bad Braxton Hicks like constant Braxton Hicks so they did 24 hour urine so the next day was Saturday that that night because it you know it's 24 hours from when I got admitted they said that my protein was the high is 300 and mine was 900 so mine was three times the high and they said we gotta induce you tonight <laughs> and I was like I started crying because it freaked me out because I was like oh my god this is really happening I'm gonna get a Dr. Pepper because this is my coffee <laughs> I normally drink water but um I needed some caffeine today. <laughs> um, my washer just quit. I got sidetracked from talking about how me and Devin met to how Jesse was born, but oh well. <laughs> if you're interested, you're still here. If not, I will. <laughs> um, my pro. Oh, now the dryer stopped. That was good timing. Uh, let's see. My protein was super high. I started kind of crying because I was freaking out. Devin's dad and all that was there at the time. So they t they came in there. It was like 8 o'clock at night when they told us that. And then they said, uh, you need to go take a shower. Eat, take a shower. And when you get done, we'll go ahead and start inducing you. <laughs> so, you know, that was kind of scary just how sudden it was. Like, we already knew. We had already talked about it. That we, we knew we were probably going to come home with the baby. We just didn't realize it was going to take so long to get to come home. <laughs> um, so they started inducing me. Uh, at 10 and I fell asleep sometime after that. We was watching a Predators game because it was the uh, playoffs and I love hockey. I don't know if you guys know that. I don't know if I ever said that but I love hockey. Hockey's my game. But uh, And I started contracting more because when I when I went in there I was having Braxton Hicks and then they actually turned into real contractions and then so when they started the inducing pro process which is horrible I did not realize it was going to be as an uncomfortable and awkward as it was. Um, very awkward and painful. Ugh. People, they don't tell you this kind of stuff in birthing classes. <laughs> but, um, these tentacles keep getting twisted up on my yarn. Uh, I didn't really start having hardcore contractions until about 2 in the morning. I got woke up with them. So I woke Devin up because, you know, if I was suffering, he's going to suffer with me. Because <laughs> he's asleep on one of those horrible, way too short couches. And uh, I got pictures. We took a little bit of pictures and videos of them. I wanted to, like, vlog. Not vlog because I wasn't vlogging at the time. But, you know, like, for us, I wanted to document more. But once I started labor, I didn't even care. My sister, luckily, and my, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law took a lot of pictures and stuff for me. So I'm glad for that. Because I was out of it. I was planning on doing a natural birth. Like no medicine. And I made it to 8 centimeters. And then I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so they finally gave me uh, an epidural. Which was terrifying. Because I was having constant. They gave me way too much. P p what's it called? Pitocin? Something like that. I was having contractions constantly. It's like there was no break in between them. And I didn't know at the time, you know, I was a first time mom. I didn't know that you could tell them to tone stuff like that down. I was just going with whatever they told me. But now that I'm a seasoned mother, <laughs> um, and I've done research and stuff since I had him, I know now that I could tell them, you know, like to turn the stuff down. I wish I'd known that then because it was horrible. It was bad. <laughs> I'm sure labor is bad for everybody, but. Sh I mean, I knew it was going to be rough, but I didn't realize it was going to be. And also, I've heard that, you know, natural labor without, you know, being induced is 
easier than with the Pitocin because the, the chemicals and all that make it harder or something. I don't know. That's just what I've read. I don't know if that's true, but it was rough. And so I made it to eight and finally got my epidural, <laughs> which helped a little bit. And then, yeah. But I started pushing at one and he was born at 140 on the nose. He was sick when he was born. He had a fever real bad. I had a fever real bad. We were both on oxygen. Um, he had some kind of, I can't remember the scientific wording for it, but he had, he didn't have an infection in his blood, but he had the markers for it. So they had to give him antibiotics for a week. So we had to stay in the hospital. We were in the hospital for, we went in Friday night and the next Friday morning we got released. But Devin only got to stay with me. He got to stay with me Friday night because he took off work. Because he didn't want to use his FMLA days yet. Because he didn't know, you know, if we were going to come home pregnant or come home with a baby. So, we, uh, he didn't actually have to use his FMLA days until Monday, Tuesday. So, he got to stay Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. So, he did stay a while. <laughs> it's just, he stayed a while with me. And, um, and then Tuesday, he, Tuesday night, he had to go home because he had to sleep before he went to work. And that was really depressing. Um, that was the first time I had been without Devin in years. We'd been spending every day together up until that day. And I had just had a baby who was sick and I was dealing with all the hormones from having a baby strewed out of my body, a sick baby. And... I was a first time mom, so I didn't know what I was doing, and it was really depressing, and I, I think that was probably the most depressed I ever felt in my whole life, and I guess it was what is called postpartum depression, except it wasn't towards the baby, you know, I know a lot of women have trouble with having a new baby, but um, with me, it was like I was alone with the new baby, and my Devin wasn't there. I can't, I can't exist without Devin. <laughs> Like, I could never imagine my life now without him. And that might sound crazy, but it's just how it is to me. <laughs> so, that was a really rough time. My mom did come and stay with us, and she even, she was worried about me because of how bad I was taking them and not being there. It was like the worst depression I'd ever felt in my life. It was worse. It was horrible. And we were having to deal with Jesse being sick, and... He had a big cast on his arm because they had an IV in it and they didn't want him ripping it out. And They had to come and get him every few hours and poke his little feet to test his blood. And then he was jaundiced a little bit so they had to keep wrapping him up in that blue blanket thing. Oh, look at these tentacles. It was just a really bad time. And what was worse is my birthday was that Saturday. <laughs> Mother's Day was that Sunday, because that year it was on the 8th, May 8th. So, Jesse was born on a Sunday morning, well, afternoon. And we went home that Friday, which was cool, because when we finally got to go home, Devin was off work. The next day was my birthday, May 7th, and then that Sunday after that was my first Mother's Day. And it was all just really emotional. I had a really hard time. That was just a really hard time. Because, you know, in my mind, I thought I was going to go into labor at home. And then I was going to go to the birthing center and have my water birth that I planned for. And then we were going to stay there until the next morning and go home and be home with our new baby. That was my plan. And none of that worked out. <laughs> I had to be forced into labor with chemicals and monitored and pumped full of all kinds of crap and I didn't get to have my water birth that I planned for and prepared for and I didn't get to go home the next day I had to stay in a hospital for a week with them coming and taking my baby away from me every few hours to go poke him it was just really bad and Devin wasn't with me <laughs> it was just bad I was so glad to get home finally after after he was born, after the two days in the labor and delivery area where the normal moms get to stay there for two days and then go home, you're in like a little suite. 
and uh, you get your own bathroom and everything. But from where he was sick and had to stay in the nursery, he wasn't sick enough to need to go to like a children's hospital, but he was sick enough that he couldn't go home. So um, they had to move me to a guest room, which is where they put, you know, moms who can't can't legally stay, you know, because they can't just keep that room with me in it while there's other laboring moms who need it. Um, so they put me in what's called a guest room. <laughs> it is a horrible little tiny room like the size of a closet and it has a toilet in it but not a shower. So that's what I was in from that Tuesday to that Friday morning with my mom and then Jesse when they'd let me have him. It was bad. It was bad. But we survived it, and I got to finally go home with my baby and my man. Oh, God, this octopus is going to kill me. I'm getting it done slowly. I feel like the maroon tentacles turned out a little bit longer than the gray ones. I don't know how that worked, happened, but I'm having to, like, fix that now that I'm just crocheting them together. It's hot here. It snowed yesterday. It was in the 30s and snowing, and then today it's in the 70s, and it's hot. Weather is weird. I know it's a lot. It's like that in most of the middle part of America, going all the way across. It's just you can't decide whether it's a northern state or a southern state. <laughs> I know Tennessee is technically a southern state, but we're kind of in the middle, so we get a little bit of everything. It's like Tennessee's southern, but we're in the middle, and Florida's on the very bottom, but they don't count it as a th southern state because it's a bunch of old people. No offense, Hannah. <laughs> I don't People are weird. Or anybody else who lives in Florida. I'm sure Florida's beautiful. Actually, we want to plan a trip there soon. Um, the last beach, the only beach vacation we ever went to was, we went down to Mobile, and then we went over to Gulf Shores. It is so beautiful down there. I loved it. But I want to go to a beach that has seashells on it. Like, I didn't find a single seashell on the Gulf Shores. And I don't know if it's because other people are finding them before me or if they just don't wash up there. But then my, my mother-in-law and the kids went on a trip to Florida. They were actually in St. Petersburg and then somewhere off from there to the beach. I'm not exactly sure where. Um, and they found all kinds of awesome seashells. And it's like, What? Why weren't they where we were at? I found like two little tiny ones that look like the river shells we find here. So I gotta go down to, to the bottom of Florida and get some good seashells. I want to go on a cruise. I'm trying to talk Devin into going on a crochet cruise with me. I think that'd be cool because you know while I'm in the crochet classes and doing stuff with Mikey and all that and the other crocheters he could be off doing whatever he wants on the part you know wherever on the ship I think it'd be so cool to go on a crochet cruise I'm doing that one these days he's wanting to go to Hawaii next February because apparently February is their off season where it's still you can still swim and stuff you know it's still warm down there obviously but the tourists aren't as high and the prices are low. He's factored it out all the way down to the rental car and everything that it would only be about like $3,500 to go down there. And if we did that, we'd have to go to Nashville, fly from Nashville to Los Angeles, and then from Los Angeles to Hawaii. And then the same thing, but backwards on the way home. Which would be cool. But I'd, I kind of want to go on a cruise really bad. Especially, there's another YouTuber I watch, and it's Miss Erica. I love watching her. Um, she's not crochet. She's just like a lifestyle and travel. She travels a lot. She goes, her and her family goes on cruises a lot. They just recently went on two. One was for a business thing that she's in, and then one was just a fa family vacation. And watching her videos makes me want to go on a cruise so badly. Like, I don't even know if I'd even get off the ship. I would just stay on the cruise ship and just relax. Like, I wouldn't even care if we were traveling to Mexico and Bahamas or where, wherever they go. I would just be happy being on that big luxury ship, doing all that cool stuff. But, I mean, I would want to get off in some of the places if it was pretty weather and they didn't have crazy big bugs. Because I don't want to go anywhere that's got giant bugs. So I will probably never go to Australia. I've heard they got big old bugs. 
And I'm so allergic to mosquitoes that I know I would catch malaria. Because they would all come running towards me, all them little mosquitoes. That wherever we got off at, I would just catch every mosquito-borne disease. I'm surprised I haven't got one already. I was so worried when I was pregnant with Jesse that I was going to get the, the Zika virus. Or Zika. I can't remember which one it is. Because for some, you know, it was really, I was pregnant with him when that big scare of it was going around. And I was terrified because I am a magnet for mosquitoes. If there's a mosquito within a mile, it's going to be sucking my blood. I don't know what it is. I actually looked it up once and it has to do with something in like your pheromones. That some people have it that it attracts some and some people don't. Because Devin can walk outside butt naked and not a single mosquito will land on him. I can walk out there in a turtleneck and leggings and... Every inch of me covered up, and they will still find their way in there and bite me and suck all my blood. And my mosquito bites swell up huge and get really gross looking. It's just horrible. I hope Jesse takes after Devin and doesn't attract bugs as much as I do. <laughs> me and Devin talk about it all the time. If something can happen to somebody's body, it'll happen to me. Because I've had the weirdest medical things happen to me. I have the worst luck when it comes to stuff like that. I have had hand foot mouth disease, which supposedly only kids get, but me, Jesse got it once and I got it from him. It makes sense, I guess, because, um, you know, I'm his caretaker and that was horrible. That was like the worst thing I ever lived through. I don't know how little kids make it. I guess it might be easier on little kid bodies than it is on big complaining grown ups. But like once it got to my feet real bad, I couldn't even walk. It hurt so bad. I've had... What are they called? Scabies? I think that's what they're called. I have had lice as a child. I have had ticks all over me. I had this really weird, right after Jesse was born, he was like a couple months old, I got this really weird thing on my legs. I can't remember now what it's called. It was like a rethrum nodulium or something like that. It's where my red, something is where my red blood cells were doing something. And made these big bruised knots appear all over my legs. And it gave me arthritis really bad in my knees. Like again, I couldn't even walk. Devin had to help me get up out of bed. And I had a little baby I had to take care of. He was like three months old. And at the time, he hadn't spent the night at anyone's house. Because he didn't spend the night at anyone's house until he was a lot older. Because I was trying to breastfeed and all that. And it just didn't work out. He needed way more food than I could produce. But, um... That was bad, and they, we couldn't figure out what it was. Went to the doctor, and I finally just freaking found out myself from Google. I went to Dr. Google and found it out and took what I found to the doctor, and then she finally agreed that, oh, yeah, that's what it is. And there's nothing to do about it except for wait for it to go away because it comes, like, certain some things make it flare, and it's usually in women between, like, 20-something and 50-something. And, um... And it can cause arthritis to flare up real bad, which it did in my le my knees. And it was bad. I couldn't walk or nothing. And it had snowed. I remember it was snowy outside, and I was so scared I was gonna fall, and I wouldn't be able to get back up because I couldn't move. I mean, I couldn't even stand up from a sitting position without Devin helping me. It was bad. I just have bad luck when it comes to sicknesses and stuff. All right, how far am I? Looks like I have three and a half more tentacles to sew together. <sighs> look at this thing. It's going to look really cool. It's just hard. If you guys get this pattern, it flies the whole, that body, the underbody, the eyeballs. I have the eyeballs. I think they look a little weird. But I have the eyeballs. I used the red because I didn't want to go buy black just to make pupils with. And I didn't want to dig out. Uh, worsted black and hold it together so I just went with what I had which I had this I came super close to running out of this color like I was playing yarn chicken and I got nervous I was like oh my god I'm gonna have to do something I even told myself I like I was like self if you run out of purple ready maroon color I'm just gonna finish it with gray so one of his tentacles would have been you know like up to here and then gray but luckily I had enough and then I had a little ball left and it was enough to make his each pupil has two rounds of the black purple part. In my case, it's uh, purple plum, but it's a red color. And then it's white, and then you do the eyelid, which is gray. So, 
And now there's like that much of that purple color left that Jesse has somewhere. He was running around playing with it. And the gray, I have a ball probably about the size of the eyeball left of the second little skein of gray. So I used a jumbo skein of gray and two of the little skeins. So basically two jumbo. And then one jumbo of this red color. I just hit myself in the face with that. And then probably like half of a little skein of the white between the eyeballs and doing the outline of this thing. And I'm still not done with that. I'm hoping so I had to finish that. It's been 45 minutes. It's because I'm talking, I'm randomly talking and I'm trying to finish this stinking octopus. I got some more stuff for Jesse's birthday. I will show that and I'll probably show pictures of his birthday or maybe some clips. But it's a construction theme. And today I was at Hobby Lobby just looking at random stuff. I got a few things, but I'll show that in my um, podcast. Um, and I went over to their birthday party stuff just to look if they had any construction theme, which they had some. So I got a, um, what is it called? It's like a, it's like a little roll of caution tape just because I thought it'd be cute to like decorate with. I got a little hard hat for him to wear for pictures. I got... Oh, chocolate rocks to put on his cake. They had some candy rocks. And I had been looking for those. And I, when I seen those, I bought two packs of them to put on his cake. And uh, a pack of just like things you hang up to decorate with. It's construction -y. I think that's everything. We had to get him a dinosaur pinata because we couldn't find a construction one. Party City had some on their website, but when I went into the store, they didn't have any. And I didn't really want to order it because I was afraid it wouldn't come here in time. So. We just got a big dinosaur. He liked it. We showed it to him at Walmart and he liked it. So, And it's big. It's like as big as he is. I'm not going to fill it all the way up with candy. I'm just going to put like two big jumbo bags in it. And then uh, the rest will be air. So, yeah. We, pro we have everything for his birthday now, except I'm going to go the day before and get the balloons so they'll still be good and floating. And the candy. i got to get the candy between now and then. I'll probably get it this weekend. So we are all ready for his birthday. i got everything to make his cake with. I'm excited to make his cake. I hope it turns out good. I'm really excited that I found those chocolate rocks because I was really hoping I could find something to put on his cake. Because it's already going to look like dirt, but I wanted the chocolate rocks to put in, you know, like around the bottom of the cake and some up on top of it. And then there's a little dump truck I got for his cake to put in the dump truck. I thought that would be cute. So I found some. So that's cool. I don't know if it's so good to show him to eat those though because then he might be trying to eat real rocks. Which he's tried before. He's such a stinker. He's at my mom's. She came and took us to the store. We went through shopping and stuff. And then she ended up wanting to take him with her. So. He went to her house for tonight. So I'm filming. I'm probably about to cut this off. Because it's been a while. I think my phone's flashing too. I don't know. I've never seen that flash before. It's weird. <laughs> But I'm going to, I guess I'll go ahead and let you guys go. It's been almost an hour. I'm still working on a stinking octopus. I'm going to finish it though. I'm going to finish it before the film tomorrow. So I'm going to work on it right now. I'm going to finish it right now. So if you have any other um, questions you'd like to hear me babble about, leave them below and I'll put them in my baggie. Um, yeah, all my links are down below. My Facebook group, which has the cow going on right now, the cakewalk cow. And my Ravelry page and Ravelry group and my Instagram are all below. And I will also link my Knit Crate um, link below. So if you click on that and go through there and want to buy a Knit Crate, you can use my coupon code, no catch name 20 to get 20% off your first crate, which is about $5, I think. should be about $5. So you can get uh, up to $63 worth of yarn and patterns for 20 bucks, which is a really good deal. So uh, that will all be linked below if you're interested in it. Um, yeah, I guess that's everything. So I'll see you guys tomorrow in the no kitchen. Well, actually, yeah, I'll put this up tonight. So I'll see you tomorrow, Friday on um, the regular no kitchen name episode. Bye, guys.